called The Man Whose Mother Was a Pirate. And it's written by Margaret Mayhew and illustrated by Margaret Chamberlain. Let's see what happens. There was once a little man who had never seen the sea, although his mother was an old pirate woman. The two of them lived in a great city far, far from the seashore. The little man always wore a respectable brown suit and respectable brown shoes. He worked in a neat office and wrote down rows of figures in books, ruling lines under them. Here he is. Oh, there is his mother, hanging and washing on the line, and there's a parrot. That must be her flag. Look, her pirate flag. Well, one day, his mother said, Shipmate, I want to see the sea again. I want to fire my old silver pistol and see the waves jump with surprise. Oh, mother, said the little man, we haven't got a car or a bicycle or a horse, and we've no money either. All we have is a wheelbarrow and a kite. We must make do, his mother answered sharply. I will go and load my pistol and polish my cutlass. The little man went to work. Look at the food, look what she's eating. He's got a tiny little egg in an egg cup. <laughs> Look at the teapot. And the parrot, did you see the parrot? Please, Mr. Fat, he begged his boss. Please, may I have two weeks holiday to take my mother to the seaside? I don't go to the seaside, said Mr. Fat crossly. Why should you? It is for my mother, the little man explained. She used to be a pirate. Oh, well, that's different, said Mr. Fat, who rather wished he were a pirate himself. But make sure you are back in two weeks or I will buy a computer. The dog, look, under the desk. Look at all those chocolates. <gasps> Yum. So off they set, the little man pushing his mother in the wheelbarrow and his mother holding the kite. His mother wore a green scarf and gold earrings. Between her lips was her old black pipe, behind one ear a crimson rose. The little man wore his brown suit buttoned and his brown shoes tied. He trottled along, pushing the wheelbarrow. As they went, his mother talked about the sea. She told him of its voices. It sings with a booming voice and smiles as it slaps the ships. It screams or sadly sighs. There are many voices in the sea and a lot of gossip too. Where are the great whales sailing? Is the ice moving in Hudson Bay? What is the weather in Terra del Falgo? The sea knows the answers to a lot of questions and one wave tells another. Oh yes, mother, said the little man, whose shoes hurt him rather. Look at him, pushing his mother in the wheelbarrow. She's got a big smile on her face, she's having fun. I love her red boots, did you see her red boots? Mm. Where are you off to, asked a farmer. I'm taking my mother to the seaside, said the little man. I wouldn't go there myself, said the farmer. It's up and down with the waves. In and out with the tide. The sea doesn't stay put the way a good hill does. My mother likes things that don't stay put, said the little man. Something began to sing in the back of his mind. Could that be the song of the sea, he wondered as he pushed the wheelbarrow. His mother rested her chin on her knees. Yes, it's blue in the sunshine, she said, and it's grey in the rain. I've seen it golden with sunlight, silver with moonlight, and black as ink at night. It's never the same twice. Look at the cows. Look at the big tongue. Little doggy there. The farmer, he's got his gumboots on, look. They came to a river. There was no boat. The little man tied the wheelbarrow to the kite. 
A wind blew by, ruffling his collar, teasing his moustache. Hold tight, mother, he called. Up in the air they went as the wind took the kite. The little man dangled from the kite string. His mother swung in her wheelbarrow basket. <laughs> She's in there. Look at him. Way up there. This is all very well, Sam, she shouted to him. But the sea, ah, the sea. It tosses you up and pulls you down. It speeds you along. It holds you still. It storms you and calms you. There's a bit of everything in the sea. Yes, mother, the little man said. The singing in the back of his mind was growing louder and louder. As he dangled from the kite string, the white wings of the birds in the sky began to look like the white wings of ships at sea. Can you see the white wings? Well, there's the parrot. The parrot's coming along too. The kite let them down gently on the other side of the river. Where are you going? asked a philosopher fellow who sat reading under a tree. Look, there he is. The birds in the tree. I'm taking my mother to the sea, said the little man. What misery, cried the philosopher. Well, I didn't much like the idea to start with, said the little man. But now there's the song in the back of my mind. I'm beginning to think I might like the sea when I get there. Go back, go back, little man, cried the philosopher. The wonderful things are never as wonderful as you hope they'll be. The sea is less warm, the joke less funny. The taste is never as good as the smell. Hurry up, the sea is calling, shouted the pirate mother, waving her cutlass from the wheelbarrow. Look, there's a little frog, a little mouse. The little man trundled his mother away, and as he ran, he noticed that his brown suit had lost all its buttons. Then something new came into the wind's scent. Glory, glory! There's the salt, cried his mother triumphantly. Suddenly they came over the hill. Suddenly there was the sea. Wow. There they are. It's big, isn't it? It's a mermaid. Oh, some whales. Some beautiful ships. The little man could only stare. He hadn't dreamed of the bigness of the sea. He hadn't dreamed of the blueness of it. He hadn't thought it would roll like kettle drums and swish itself onto the beach. He opened his mouth and the drift and the dream of it, the weave and the wave of it, the fume and the foam of it never left him again. At his feet the sea stroked the sand with soft little paws. Further out, the great graceful breakers moved like kings into court, trailing the peacock pattern sea behind them. Wow, that little crab. The little man and his pirate mother danced hippity hoppity happy hornpipes up and down the beach. The little man's clothes blew about in the wind, delighted to be free at last. A rosy sea captain stopped to watch them. Wow, well, here are two likely people, he cried. Will you be my bosun, madam? And you, little man, you can be my cabin boy. Thank you, said the little man. Say aye aye, sir, roared the captain. Aye aye, sir, replied the little man, just as smartly as if he'd been saying aye aye, sir, all his life. So Sailor Sam went on board with his pirate mother and the sea captain and a year later someone bought Mr Fat a green glass bottle with a letter in it. Having a wonderful time, the letter read, why don't you run off to sea too? And if you want any more moral to the story than this, you must go to sea and find it. <laughs> Look at them, having a lovely time. Even the pirate. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. See you.